Welcome back. In this lecture, we take up the question of contracting systems. Now, we know that there are risks in international sales, that the risks that are in any sales transaction are magnified in the international context. Now, these risks can be any number of things, and we talked about those in the last lecture, but generally they break down into two categories. There are problems with performance or problems with unexpected conditions. Now, we mentioned before that in the modern world, oftentimes you don't know the company you're dealing with. You don't trust the company. What a contracting system does is it provides comfort. We've said that the way to manage these risks is to utilize a contract, but contracts must exist within the context of a contracting system. So if we, we no longer have to trust the other party if we trust the contracting system. So when you go to do business, you go to, uh, uh, to the grocery store and you buy some chips, you don't have to particularly trust that grocery store. Instead, you know that if there is a dispute arising out of that bag of chips, there is a contracting system that's going to govern your purchase of that, that's going to give you comfort that you can rely on, that if the chips are bad or if the chips make you sick, you have a means of addressing that dispute. So in this lecture, we're going to talk about contracting systems, and there are multiple contracting systems. We're going to talk about international sale of goods, and we're going to talk about the role that the contract plays in these different contracting systems. So in the modern world, we need contracting systems. And these contracting systems must provide for the ability to assign risks between the parties, that they allow us to allocate risks between one another. Now, I said these come down to two categories, and the first would be problems with performance. Top problem with performance would be non-performance. For a seller, that means a failure to ship the goods. For a buyer, it may be failure to pay for the goods, non-performance. Late performance could also be a problem, that if I am a seller and I sell goods on credit, and the buyer doesn't pay when they are due or when they arrive, but instead pays 60 days later, then I have lost the use of that money for that time period, and I am unable to go on with my business in the manner I expected. Similarly, for a buyer, buyer needs the goods at a certain date, and if those goods don't arrive, the buyer is going to be harmed by that. They may not be able to uh, resell the goods. Unacceptable performance would mean something less than non-performance. So, for instance, for a seller, it's shipping goods that do not conform with the contract. Or for a buyer, it means partial payment, not paying for the goods as you were supposed to. Even early performance can be a problem if you are involved in, for instance, construction. Every large uh, building that's constructed, there's a very careful schedule set out with the suppliers of the goods that are going to be used in the building of that building. And the schedule is important because you as a buyer don't want those goods to arrive early because you got to find a place to keep them uh, uh, until you need them. So there's a cost associated with that. You want the goods when you are ready to use the goods. So if the goods are shipped early, that can cause problems and can cause greater cost for you. The other category of problems is unexpected conditions. And the first of these are acts of God. Acts of God is a legal term essentially referring to matters that are completely outside the control of the parties. Acts of God could be natural disasters. An act of God could be a fire caused by a lightning strike, something along those lines. There are other potential problems with unexpected conditions. There could be unexpected costs. 
There could be diminished revenues. There could be market forces at play that prevent the parties from executing on their strategy, whether it was sales or purchases.